News fighting the flames. The winds just come up and, you know, there's not much you can do except just really pray <laughs> and hope that it's not too bad. Firefighters continue to battle the blaze near Pryor as residents in that area are thankful to still have their homes. Plus, a hurricane slams into Florida. It can be, simply put, life or death if you don't move. We'll take a look at the devastation, something one current Montana resident knows all too well. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us on this Wednesday night. I'm Russ Riesinger. Some tense moments at Billings West High School today as the school was ordered to shelter in place. That decision came after three separate incidents over the last few days. It was a swift action taken by new superintendent Dr. Irwin Garcia to maintain the safety and security of the school community. As David Jay finds out, it was also a decision that was appreciated by students. We're told that the shades on the windows were pulled, the doors were locked and closed in the classrooms, and students waited it out. One parent who didn't want to be on camera said the communication from the school was good, and the students say the shelter-in-place procedure worked smoothly. Neighbors near West High School called police about suspicious behavior, and an officer suggested the shelter-in-place. Basically stay in our rooms, don't go in the halls, don't go use the bathroom, stay in class until the shelter-in-place is lifted. Axel Dodderweich was at the Career Center when the incidents in shelter-in-place happened on Wednesday morning, but she's been through similar drills. We do stay calm. We Teachers definitely like uh, show that, present that to students because they know that raising panic is not going to do any good. People can get hurt when there's raising panic, so it's just a mental thing. Students say they did not know the reason for the shelter in place and everyone knew what to do. They announced that we were having it and everyone just kind of followed as they should as they were trained to. Locking the doors, making sure everything is secure and just kind of went on with class. Everyone was very calm about it. Uh, everyone was just asking what was happening, asking questions about it. Dr. Erwin Garcia alerted parents partly on the School District 2 Facebook page. A gentleman apparently was uh, looking into cars and vehicles around the area and houses. We had another individual apparently uh, stopping girls coming to the school and asking them questions, random questions. Then we have another report of another person actually talking to the girls and saying some improprieties. Parents commented on Facebook thankful for the information. Dr. Garcia says police have a license plate number and the school district is doing what it can to help with the investigation. We definitely take this seriously. We, you know, we want to make sure that every child that comes to school feels safe. How safe do you feel at school? Very safe, honestly. I feel safe. The safety here is really good. In Billings, David J, MTN News. A man accused of robbing two Billings banks within a week was charged today in Yellowstone County District Court. 25-year-old Patrick Allen Justice faces two counts of felony robbery with not guilty pleas entered on his behalf. Justice is accused of robbing those two banks with 87-year-old Stephen Whitecloud allegedly driving the getaway car during the second robbery in the Heights. White Cloud was initially booked into jail, but has since been released on possible medical concerns. He has previous felony convictions in Yellowstone County for robbery in 2008 and criminal endangerment in 2021. Justice also faces an unrelated felony assault charge stemming from an incident in July and drug charges dating back to 2022. Tonight, that big wildfire near Pryor continues to burn, but firefighters have been aggressive in the attack, both from the ground and the air. Fire officials first reported this fire at 10,000 acres last night, but they say the threat has decreased some, and it actually only burned about 2,400 acres so far. It did kind of flare up a little earlier today when we had some heavy winds once again. Both BIA engines, along with several other agencies, are working the fire lines, but right now the blaze is moving away from any houses and towards unpopulated ranch land. Well, the threat to houses is minimal right now, but that was far from the case yesterday when it threatened 30 to 40 houses. Tonight, our Kelsey Boggs catches up with some homeowners who feared that they could lose everything. The Prior Road fire burned so intensely, it actually warped this hazard sign, warning drivers of the dangers ahead. Residents are left feeling lucky that more damage wasn't done. 
pretty much grew up out here. My grandfather's had a ranch here my whole life. Living all the way out here comes with its perks. We really don't have the problems. It's just beautiful. But when an emergency occurs, that peace and quiet can be deafening. You can see it over there, just look like they were hauling grain, and then all of a sudden, the dust will start to change a different color. And then we saw it. On Tuesday afternoon around 1.20 p.m., a fire erupted in farm fields near Hay Creek on the Crow Reservation, just north of Pryor. While an exact cause has not yet been released, officials say it is believed to be human-related. Originally, officials reported nearly 10,000 acres of land had been burned, but that number was corrected to around 1,000 acres Wednesday morning. Mapping efforts are underway for a more accurate estimate. We went down with our truck and all the other neighbors kind of showed up with their trucks too to try to help. But the winds just come up and, you know, there's not much you can do except just really pray yeah. and hope that it's not too bad. Responding agencies were able to save houses and lives while battling one of the largest fires our area has seen this season, something homeowner Cami Bertolino feels grateful for. I think it's really patriotic. You know, I think we really have a really good um, system, you know, when it comes to the people and the volunteers out there that come out you know, and take their time to help an area that really they don't have a lot of contact with. Without those heroes, the scene out here would look much different, but not everything was left unscathed. My heart goes out to the Kakowskis because, you know, they lost all their winter pasture, I think, pretty much, and their fences are just going to be shot, and, you know, it's going to be hard on them. Firefighters continued to battle the blaze Wednesday as it headed east into less inhabited ranch lands, leaving behind a trail of ashes and indebted homeowners. It's still one of those things where I feel for them. Just be careful out there. You know, don't plow your fields when it's hot right now. Wait till in the middle of the night or something. Near Billings, Kelsey Boggs, MTN News. But firefighters are definitely keeping a close eye on the weather report as they look to keep the flames in check. With more on what we can expect, here's meteorologist Keith Meyer. Yeah, wind was the story today across the area, especially those erratic winds with those strong gusts across the area that moved in late this afternoon. You could see some 63 mile hour gusts there at Miles City, 54, Billings, 63 at Haver. I think those extreme winds are done, but we still have some wind concerns for Thursday. Lake wind advisory for Thursday across Fort Peck and then a high wind warning out there uh, from Lewistown up towards the Rocky Mountain front. Temperatures today, high temperatures generally upper 80s to around 90 in the eastern plains, otherwise 70s for the most part from west of Billings, some 60s there. Cool spot was Kalispell at 60 degrees this afternoon. Things we're going to talk about just in a few minutes. Sunny, breezy in 80s for Thursday. Then we start the warming trend Friday through Sunday. And then cloudy, cool, showers and thunderstorms likely for Labor Day, probably into Tuesday. We'll have the details in just a few minutes. E. Dahlia smashed into Florida as a Category 3 hurricane today, leaving behind a stretch of devastation. That storm tore through Florida's Gulf Coast with fierce winds, uprooting trees and submerging entire communities. Thousands lost power, and that storm surged, leaving behind a mess of dangerous debris as well. E. Dahlia reached Georgia as a Category 1 hurricane earlier today, packing heavy winds and rain before heading to South Carolina as a tropical storm tonight. Well, as that storm hit more than 2,000 miles away, for one Montana resident, it was all too familiar. He used to live in Florida, living through and forecasting many storms just like this one. Phil Van Pelt reports. We may be thousands of miles away, but people right here inside of this building behind me have firsthand experience about not only forecasting these storms, but also going through them as well. These things can change people's lives forever. You want to pay attention to them. They're important. As Hurricane Idalia hit northern Florida, Alabama, and Georgia, it has the eyes of the nation focused on the destruction it's leaving in its wake. And even here, 2,000 miles away in Billings, that force of the storm hits close to home. Hurricane Dorian was the closest we had. Had a few tropical storms, though, so definitely got used to it down there. Luca Renz attended the University of Miami and is now a meteorologist at the National Weather Service in Billings. He knows these storms inside and out and knows the winds aren't the only cause of damage. There can still be big impacts depending on how large the storm is and how much water it's pushing because one of the actual deadliest parts of a hurricane or tropical storm can be the water impact, the storm surge. Idalia has seen storm surges as high as 16 feet in places, putting those who chose not to evacuate in great danger. It can be simply put life or death if you don't move, uh, depending on where you are. If that water is coming in and you get trapped there, 
sometimes there's not really much you can do. Here in Montana, Arends doesn't spend much time forecasting hurricanes, but he says you don't need to look farther than last summer and our historic floods to realize we also have events that can produce similar dangers. Water, people don't always think about how impactful it can be, but it's something to consider and it's very serious because Water can carry a lot of force and do a lot of damage. A meteorologist who's experienced severe weather from Miami to Montana and using what he's learned to protect people in the path of those storms. You see it kind of from a different perspective as a meteorologist, as the general public, but down there everyone understands hurricanes are a risk and they're always a risk and always will be. In Billings, Phil Van Pelt, MTN News. President Biden has been briefed on the hurricane and offered the governors of Florida, Georgia and South Carolina whatever assistance they may need to deal with the disaster. The Biden administration also announced it will spend $95 million to improve Hawaii's electric grid to limit damage during future events there. A recent study found the 3.3 million visitors to Yellowstone National Park in 2022 contributed $600 million to the economy of surrounding communities. According to that study, spending supported more than 6,200 jobs. All of that, of course, came despite the park seeing historic flooding that left the north and northeast entrances closed for almost the entire summer season. The same study found that nearly 3 million visitors to Glacier had a total economic impact of $548 million within 60 miles of the park. Nationwide, the Park Service says almost 38% of the spending generated by parks is for hotel stays, with slightly more than 19% coming at local restaurants. It's crunch time for Montana, but don't worry, it has nothing to do with studying and more to do with eating. Montana Crunch Time is a statewide event encouraging people to crunch or bite into locally grown and raised food. That program is designed to encourage healthy eating habits and support local food-based initiatives throughout the state. All Montanans are encouraged to participate. This year, Montana will compete against several states, including Colorado, Kansas, Missouri, and Nebraska for the Mountain Plains Crunch Off Champions banner. Crunches can be registered online throughout October. Well, still to come on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2. The start of a tradition, Hardin High School holds its first ever welcome back to school powwow. We'll take you there. And Red Lodge's quarterback meets lofty expectations on the field while being driven into dentistry off of it. We'll meet our athlete of the week coming up in just a bit. The MTN 10 o'clock news continues right after this.